Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about how I'm using this bee stand that we have from Dan Halt, the Hunting Beast Gear uh, tree stand, and this is how I'm running it. Very similar to how I do my lone wolf setups and stuff too, but I'm going to take a minute. We're going to kind of break it down. I'm going to show you what I've done to it, what mods I make to it, and uh, that kind of stuff. But this is basically how this stand lives right here. Okay, this is my stand and my sticks. Three lone wolf sticks. I like them a lot. I'm not a fan of mini sticks. I, uh, for my style, these work better. Okay. Not knocking mini sticks, but they're not for me. I like this, this style better. You can see that they fit on my stand perfectly. Okay. So I, the way I carry them, I don't gain any advantage, um, by going to a mini stick. So, uh, as you can see right there. So it's a very simple setup for me. And I'll break it down and show you what it is, but no noise, no rattle, no sound whatsoever. Completely dead quiet. Very light, comes in at about 16 pounds for the whole rig, whole setup right there. Um, sweet setup, so let's show you what we got going on here so it kind of makes sense for you. Um, what I do is, see now on my lone wolves, I had to use two swim noodles, one underneath the seat on there as well too, and that's where this one came in. I thought I'd need it for this. I do not, because of this thick pad on that seat, it rests there, keeps the sticks off my antler bracket just barely, and then they rest on this swim noodle here in the back. And uh, they're, like I said, they just stay in. And I use two um, bungee straps in there. Sweet, simple, and easy. Now, I will bring you in and show you a couple things on here uh, that we do that I, you know, as far as my setup and what I'm using. Let me pull you off the tripod, bring you in, and show you what we've got. Okay, here it is. Now, a couple things to note before I take this apart, because a lot of people have a lot of questions on this system. Look at how nice and low profile that is. I mean, it's a sweet setup, and uh, it's, I've been using it now for about eight years on my lone wolf stands. You know, the same kind of setup. You can see swim noodle there, swim noodle there. I don't have this one locked down right now because it's just sitting idle, so I don't want to put tension on the strap, so I leave it loose. But that setup has worked flawless for me for a very long time, and, um, and, and I'm not changing it. Like I said, my stick setup, I absolutely love it. This B stand, I did a full review on it, and I love this stand. This is going to be my go-to stand this year. Now... Um, these are just basically swim noodles, okay? This is a big noodle that I cut in half because it was too big. Here's a standard swim noodle right here, and I just duct taped it. All I do is I put a notch in them, uh, which I'll show you that when I pull this off so you can see. I'll break it down for you here rather than grab that out. But before I break this down, I want to show you a couple tips real quick that are important. doesn't matter whose stand you're using, but notice here, when I have this wrapped, okay, notice that this cable, my tree stand cable that's right here, is running, hang on, is that crap on the line? There we go. Um, is running inside of this. See how that's nice and tight? Keeps that a nice tight profile right there. Now, if we spin this and we look at this side, okay, see how this cable's sticking out? That's a snag factor, okay? That can snag on something, catch branches, sticks, things like that, and slow me down and make me have to turn around because it's not behind this, all right, behind that strap. I left it on on purpose, but this would go behind that S-hook on there so that it keeps the cables out. Just a tip for you, if you're running them this way, keep those cables inside of there and you got a real slim line profile. I carry this rig right on my uh, on my backpack. The backpack straps are only for going up the tree for me. This rides on my actual pack, um, right on the compression straps on the back. Doesn't matter if I'm using my Kuyu uh, Venture 2300 as a day pack, or if I'm using my Mystery Ranch Pintler pack, or my XO uh, K2000 pack. This stand, this setup rides right on the very back, connected to the compression straps. It works like a champ. So, now another thing I want to note before I take it apart. I have, you will see in here, I have some tape right there, some uh, Stealth Strip tape. Okay, by Stealth Outdoors, put a link down below for you. But that is there on that lower part. You're going to ask me when I open this, so I'm showing it to you now. If you look at these teeth, the way I hang my stands, this is, this one right here, where my finger is, is actually the kicker leg of this one. And this one right here is the kicker leg of this one for the, the bracket, these V brackets. They can bump against there like you're seeing on there. So I don't want them to make noise when I set them and I start wrenching down on my compression, my bungee straps, and have that start creaking or scraping or making noise against there. That's why that tape is on there. So I can show it to you right now as you see it. But that's that setup that I'm running and why. Um, I run three sticks with one aider. You can see the aider in here. It is still a homemade aider. I got a 
that piece of uh, same rope I used for my uh, lineman belt. It's inside of there because it's a very stiff rope. Um, and it's a 20, 25 inch aider is what I use. I just run one on one stick. I am not comfortable running multiple aiders up the tree. I don't feel good. I don't like the swing. I, I'm not, I, you know, I've been climbing a long time. I've been, I've hunted everywhere all the way up to 28 feet for a whole season. I understand all that stuff, but for me personally, comfort and safety is more important. I'm not comfortable being on an aider in the dark above that first step. So for me, I run one aider only. This setup lets me get to 18 feet high if I want to. So it's a good setup for me. Sweet, simple, and easy. Very functional. So let's take it apart and see what we got here. So I'm going to actually put the phone down because I might need two hands. I don't know if I can. Let's see. Maybe we can pop this with one. Yep, we can. Okay, there's one. And let's see if we can pop this side with just one hand here without losing it off there. Yep, we're good. Okay. And let's tip it we're not on the ground. There we go. All right. So let's take the sticks right out of here. So we don't need them in here. So let's grab them and set them over here so they're out of the way. Okay. So <clears throat> here's the stand. Swim noodle right here. Sorry, you got to. I'm going to apologize now because as you see me sweating like crazy, it is actually 10 minutes to two in the morning and it is still super hot. I've been working all day, took a shower, got some work done and it is brutal. It is still like 80 something degrees and, and I'm, I'm sweating like crazy here. Um, but we have the swim noodle and I put a notch. Okay. I just take this knife right here which I actually is the only thing in my life I've ever stolen. I stole this when I was 12 years old and I still got my first job at a restaurant, Coyle's Restaurant in Houghton Lake, Michigan. And I felt so bad after I stole it. I put it in a box for garbage, brought it out. And this, before that day was over, I couldn't even tolerate it. And I had to go tell the owner that I stole that knife. And uh, he laughed at it. And then he uh, told me how much it was and said, buy it from me instead. And I did. Um, but it was my only thing in my life I've ever stolen. Um, but I ended up paying for it right there. It cost me $9 at the time been using this knife forever well that knife is what i used to cut this notch just real simple slice it in slice it in take it run it you can see it's almost the same width as that and then just pop that chunk out is what i did and uh but that fits right on that crossbar right there like that sweet simple easy right there like we want so that's the, and, and with this b stand having that seat so thick i don't need to use this pad anymore which is nice so uh on my lone wolf i had to have one here and one there and the two straps now i do not need this one this is just now a bonus one all i need is this and these two straps on the straps i am very detail oriented on all of my stuff okay notice that these are cut short i left a piece here to show you this here is how long they once were, okay, as a straight hook, and I cut that off, a pair of uh, uh, wire cut or uh, uh, chain cutters, whatever they are, bolt cutters, right there. If you don't have bolt cutters, get bolt cutters. It's kind of part of being a man, you got to have bolt cutters. That's what they tell me anyway. So bolt cutters are good, and I cut the ends of them off. And then I put aquarium tubing. This is just standard little aquarium tubing. I think I got some in here somewhere. It was back there. Yeah, this stuff right here, just standard aquarium tubing. That's what it's called. It's a, uh, uh, it doesn't even have it written on there anymore, but it's actually aquarium tubing. So uh, very, very small diameter. And uh, that's what I put on the end of these right here so that that way they don't make any noise. And I also electrical taped this around here. And that was before I had stealth strips. I have stealth strips now right here, and I may, if this starts to wear out, just actually put stealth strips around this. Um, but this way, I don't get any noise, okay? It's not loud. If I go to hook this on and grab, that's hitting the thing, see? Nice and quiet. No noise coming out of that. So that's how I'm running those bungees. Just nice, quiet setup so they're not making any noise. But I did that to all of these sides, um, all the way around. That's how those are set up. Now... Another thing to note on the stand, what I found at way I'm going to carry this stand, how I'm carrying this as far as my strap around there, what I'm doing is notice that when I come off the Versa button, when it's clo I close it. I do this while I'm in the tree. When I close it, I'm running that strap around this cable, okay, over this, right over the bolt. So it kind of holds it so it can't slide down. And then I go around once and come over and I hook right onto that adjuster knob. That keeps that strap from falling off or sliding down or being loose it's just a simple functional just that bolt right there is enough you know sticks out far enough to hold that so i just wrap it around there bring it around lock it right on that bolt snug it tight i'm done okay so that's how i'm carrying that 
I do use yak covers or yak grips as buckle covers. They're amazing. I love them. I've done videos on them and I have a new one. I don't know if it'll be out before or after this, but how to actually make those yak grips um, and sew them up and that kind of stuff. But incredible buckle covers. I run them on there. I run them on my sticks. I run them on all my other sticks. I run them on my stand. I run them everywhere. They're amazing. Okay. And they're dirt cheap. And if you're like me, and you're running three sticks and uh, three sticks and a stand. A two pack for sixteen dollars of yak grips will do four. Give you four because you cut them in half, so it'll give you four. One for the stand, one for each set of sticks, or for each stick. So you end up total with four. You can I can do my whole setup for one pack of yak grips for sixteen dollars. So um, that works fantastic. The seat. Okay, let's open this up so you can see what we got going on here. So on the seat here, one-handed, sorry. The seat is actually fully duct taped. You can see it there underneath. This is all duct tape. I spray painted this side when I painted the stand. I paint everything. So you can see I added a little bit of gray to this. You can see it on the bottom too. Um, there, there's just some touches of gray in this to kind of make it blend a little better. Just, just something. It, I, it's irrelevant, but I do it. Um, anyway bottom of the seat here um i put just it's duct tape i sprayed it with a little bit of black in there too just kind of you know mix it up and then i also added stell strips to the whole thing okay i did it right around the rim all the way around so you can see strip all the way around there and then i did it right over the top one piece two piece three pieces very nice makes that seat nice and quiet and it's going to protect it from any chipping and dinging and anything like that because that original foam that was in there was nice but what could happen like here if we take this pad here which is you know regular loose foam okay if i'm walking through the woods and i catch a stick it's going to chip it out like that okay it's going to just start pecking away at it that's the reason we duct tape our or stealth uh, strip or whatever you want to do to your actual spool noodles too is to protect them so sticks aren't ripping them apart they're just foam this seat even though it's higher density and better quality than those it is still just foam the duct tape makes it protects it keeps it waterproof everything like that the stealth strips would do the same thing and uh, i already did the duct tape before i had the stealth strips so now it has both of them on there and you'll notice it with the straps here I kept the original Velcro ones he did. These are loose pieces, all right? So rather than, I've seen a few guys just run a zip tie. The zip tie puts a lot of pressure in a very small spot on this seat. And I'm afraid that could rip over time. So what I did instead is I actually used the whole Velcro piece that you see on here. And I put the Velcro on and then I actually put a zip tie around it. And just lock the zip tie in. But I actually, that way I have both. I have that this spacer in here of this Velcro supporting the whole width of this and that zip tie, keeping it from it come apart. But notice that it's nice, smooth. I'm not snagging down in just one little spot on there. So that was my whole intention there. Keep it nice and stable and strong, but keep it solid. Um, so I put that on there. So that's the seat part. Um, now I did also put a little piece of stealth strip right here just for where that button's going to hit at not that i think it matters much but i put it on there anyway so it's it's there um this one is actually for my backpack that's what this paracord is for on the lone wolf stands there is a spot for me to hang i keep a carabiner like this on my backpack and on the lone wolf one there's a hole in that batwing bracket that i can lock in like this and hang my pack there Okay, that's where I've always, for, for 15 years, I've been hanging a pack right there. This one, I can't do that because it just would fall right out of there. It wouldn't stay on. So instead, I put a piece of paracord on here so that I can come and catch that paracord. And then that just is where my pack is going to hang right there. So it's going to lean against that. The strap will be going around a tree too like this. And my pack is going to hang right here next to me. So that's what the paracord is for, is just to, uh, you know, to hang my um, pack on. And uh, I did use stealth strips on the cables right here. Keep them nice and quiet. I've never done that before because on my lone wolf stand, you got a little more space in here because they're wider, okay? So you have more interior boot space in here with this b stand being narrower uh there's more odds of your feet rubbing against here and I, sometimes i'm in full hip boots when i'm hunting and things like that this is just going to keep that quiet for me um and i love these stealth strips they're pretty amazing so um so i put stealth strips on there 
Here, what I did is that's that one I was telling you about earlier. I showed you where that stand or the sticks will rest on here. That's why this piece of stealth strip is here. My uh, the V brackets of my sticks rest right against there, so that or keeps that covered. And I put two bumpers on here. This one is here, and then this one is here. This one is for the seat post right here, and then this part of the seat hits this one. And what these are is just this. You can use anything you want. I'm a big fan of tubing, okay? You can see I got a variety of it here. Doesn't matter what you want to pick or what you used. I actually, for that, used this one, which is uh, some leftover hose of one of my pressure washing uh, lines here. Just a quarter inch air hose is all this is by Flexzilla. But I took a piece of this and about that big and I cut it and then I cut it and, you know, I slid it so that it would open up and I just pressed it right on there like that and I ran some electrical tape around it. Good, simple, easy, and it's a good bumper. And so now when my system is closed here, watch the seat post one. Seat post hits right there and it keeps it right on there. You can see it in there. So it's gonna keep that nice and quiet. And then when my seat comes down, the seat hits right on there as well too. And it's high enough that I don't have to put it on every one of these legs. See, if I was using something that was lower or I didn't wrap that as high, hang on, let me open it. Because we're hitting right here with this one, okay? And it's nice and thick. Look at how high up that stands, which is nice so that it keeps it all away. Otherwise, I would have to run something here, 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 and here. Um, but by using a thicker buffer here, I only need to do one because there's no chance of the rest of them really hitting. So that's why I do that. I did the same thing on my lone wolf stands. I've been running that kind of a setup for many years and love it. Um, so it works great. Uh, and I also, before we get into things here too, noticed it on here. I chamfer. You can see them here. Let me get where you can see it there to focus. I chamfer the teeth on all my stands. I do this on every lone wolf. I've been doing this now for about eight or nine years. But I chamfer those teeth on the bat wings and on here. This is so that it slides down a tree. It doesn't bite in, and it's much quieter and quicker for me to set this. I don't have to do the tip or put my knee on the seat, tip the platform up, that whole tip and swing and method and all that stuff. I don't have to do that. I hang this on the stand and from my stick before I get on because I also chamfer here. You can see it slightly. See the slight chamfering on the bottom of those teeth? Very minor. But you can see it on there. Hoping you can. But I do that to all sides of this. And it lets this slide down the tree. So I'm chamfered on the bottom there. Chamfered on the bottom here. I did chamfer the top too. Just so that. Because they were pretty pointy. And you don't need. I don't need it to be pointy up here. There's no reason for it. So well, I had to file. I chamfered it. I just used a standard file. Right here. Six inch bastard file. Mill bastard file thing. And just you know. Just run it. Right here. For a second. You know. And it just. Literally. take. It took. Less than a minute to do all this stuff. So real easy. But now when I set that on the tree and I come in and it sits down, get the buckle out of there. But I put that on the tree. All I have to do is while I'm still on my stick is take my foot and lean over and stomp my foot right here on the platform. Step right between here and just give a pop right there real quick. Not even much harder than that. Just like that. And that will, boom, slide that stand right down that tree and set it. So that's why I chamfer those. It just makes it very quick, simple, and quiet to set this. And I'm not fighting sharp, pointy teeth that are digging into the tree and making it impossible for me to do that. And that's where you got to do the tip, the, you know, flip the stand up and put your knee on the seat and all this acrobatics and set it. And nothing wrong with doing that. But I learned a long time ago, this just much easier and faster. Put a slight chamfer there, slight chamfer there, and watch the thing just slide right down the tree when you just basically step and put a little pressure on there. She slides right down and bites in good. Uh, so that's why I do that. On the bottom here, we have Allen backpack straps. These are what I use. we got stuff all wrapped up in here. Let me clear it out so you can see here. Okay, so these are just standard allen backpacking strap for a tree stand okay now they do come with a plastic buckle that goes through here goes right through here and it's like another little cam over that you're supposed to feed this through i take my clippers and i cut that buckle right off and then i just tie the knot in here i tie a knot there and i tie a knot here two overhand knots there and what that does is that allows me to still have adjustability at this buckle right here 
I put a zip tie on there so they're not flopping and floating around. So I can still adjust it and slide it up and down, but that zip tie is going to keep all the tails from, you know, from flopping and hanging loose. So uh, just sweet and easy. And then when I'm up in the tree, I can take this very easily and fish them right up in. Um, I like these straps a lot because they're very, very lightweight. Incre I mean, you can't imagine how light these are. And they slide off your clothing. They don't bite to my clothes, to my shirts, or anything like that, like rubber ones do or rubber-backed ones. Uh, I don't want that. I want it to slide on and off my shoulders really easy. Otherwise, they'll start twisting and giving you fits. These I've been using for many years. I have them here on my, uh, probably see them sticking out under here. Yep, right here on my Lone Wolf one. I mean, I've been using them forever, and they just work fantastic. They're on all four of my other Assault and my uh, Alpha up there. I got tons of, uh, these are my favorite backpack straps. And the best part is they're like $9. They're dirt cheap, and they last forever. And uh, this system is just ultra quiet, no noise in it whatsoever. And you got good padding and comfortable bringing it up and down a tree. So that's why I use those Allen ones. A lot of good ones out there, but these seem to be the ones that I like the best. And uh, that basically, I think, covers... How I set up my stands, how I set up uh, this, you know, how it's going to, how I'm going to run it for this year, what it's going to be like. But these are the little mods that I make to them, little things that I do and the method for it. It's all, uh, you know, everything is thought out. Everything is designed to be ultra fast, very efficient, dead quiet, and uh, super simple. That's the key. That's, that's the key. You start getting to a point where you're hanging a stand in three and a half minutes, you know, from the time you're at the base of the tree going, I want that tree. Three and a half minutes later to be up there set up in your stand, bow in your hand and ready to hunt, you need to develop a system. This is my system. You find what one works best for you. It may even be this or take pieces of it or whatever works for you. But find that system for you that's going to work good. This one for the last, like I said, about eight years has been flawless for me as far as how I set. This is exactly the same as how my lone wolf setup is that's over there and all my lone wolf setups over there. I, I run them all the same exact way. And uh, it, it, that way I know everything about them. It's a flawless system. So thanks for watching. There'll be some links down below for you. Don't forget to check out the bow hunting Whitetails course either. Uh, the link for that, you'll see it on here, but it's at tbwpodcast.com or in the video description down there. So, um, but it's there for you. But that's, that's our setup. Thanks for watching.